Hey, can you lift a truck with your hands? No? <laughs> Shocker. But let me introduce you to nature's original strongman, the ocean, which casually tossed 700-ton boulders around like they were pebbles during a mega-tsunami that hit Africa thousands of years ago. This wasn't just a bad day at the beach. This mega-tsunami was so powerful, it made the 2004 Indonesian and 2011 Japanese tsunamis look like kiddie pool splashes. Now, to give you an idea of how terrifying regular tsunamis already are, the Japan tsunami produced waves 133 feet tall. The Indian Ocean tsunami was slightly smaller, but it took over 200,000 lives across many countries. Now, imagine something way worse. You see, for a long time, scientists thought waves that big were just science fiction. But then they found these enormous boulders, massive chunks of rock, flung far inland and did the math. It turns out only waves around 800 feet tall could have pulled off that kind of rocky vandalism. And the culprit? A volcano that literally fell apart into the ocean and triggered one of the most powerful tsunamis Earth has ever seen. Usually, tsunamis are blamed on underwater earthquakes, you know, tectonic plates getting into slap fights. But volcanoes? Oh, they've got tsunami potential, too. In 1883, for example, a volcano in Indonesia named Krakatoa erupted for six months non-stop until it exploded, and the explosion was heard all the way in Australia. This triggered many tsunamis, some almost 100 feet tall. Still, that was more like a toe dip compared to the full cannonball from the mega-tsunami. Back in ancient times, the volcano that crumbled during the mega-tsunami was huge, and it didn't just fall apart. It lost a chunk that was 10 times the size of Mount Everest. 10 Mount Everests. It was like the Earth wanted to see what would happen if we threw a mountain into the ocean just for fun. It was so massive that when the entire side of the volcano belly flopped into the Atlantic, it created waves that could cover the Statue of Liberty three times. It also destroyed an island more than 30 miles away. The volcano behind this real-life Michael Bay scene was called Fogo, located on, you guessed it, Fogo Island. This island is basically just a whole single volcano that rose from the sea thanks to a magma hotspot, a place in the ocean where a lot of magma escapes and erupts like an underwater volcano. Over time, this magma cooled and stacked up like pancakes until, voila, after seven major eruptions, the island popped out of the ocean like it was playing peekaboo. Surprise, it's a volcano. But Fogo's dramatic entrance was also a ticking time bomb. You see, the more a volcano grows, the heavier it gets. And if there's not enough magma inside it to support it, the whole thing can just collapse. Sometimes it doesn't take much. A minor earthquake, some erosion, or just a poor foundation made of soft sediment can trigger a collapse. It's like a really tall guy trying to balance over a bunch of marbles. Fogo had all the bad luck ingredients. Too tall, too heavy, and built on squishy ground. And it gets worse. As the volcano grows heavier, it starts squishing the magma underneath. That lava can't rise, so it just simmers down there, slowly thickening like soup left on a burner for too long. Gases build up, pressure increases, and eventually, kaboom! It's the volcanic version of eating too many burritos and then trying to hold in a sneeze. This massive pressure and imbalance can trigger what's called a flank collapse, which is science speak for, oops, half the volcano just fell into the ocean. That's what happened with Fogo. Most of the volcanic islands that form this way are long gone. But Fogo is still very much alive and kicking. In fact, it last erupted in 2014, and considering that it goes off every 20 years, maybe don't travel to Fogo Island in around 2034. For the longest time, scientists believe only big, bulky volcanic islands could collapse like this. But new research says that even smaller, skinnier guys, like the Danny DeVitos of the island world, aren't safe either. The thing is that small volcanic islands only seem stable because of their small mass. It's like Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger both slipping on the ice. Arnie's fall might cause more chaos, but Danny can still go flying. And those little collapses? Yes, they matter. Take Santa Maria, a tiny island that's about 170 times smaller than Hawaii. It has collapsed multiple times, not because it wanted to, 
but because it's basically standing on soggy breadcrumbs. Its foundation is loose marine sediment, and to make things worse, it's sitting right next to the East Azores Fault, where three tectonic plates meet up for daily slap fights. This fault is responsible for many earthquakes and even some tsunamis that happened in Lisbon in the past, so you can imagine what it's like living right above it. Every time the volcano in Santa Maria erupts and grows, it also sinks. But when a chunk collapses, it bounces back up like a buoy. This seamount to island to seamount to island again roller coaster means that Santa Maria has popped in and out of the ocean like a submarine playing peekaboo. And with every peak comes a potential tsunami. Another volcano with similar trust issues is Pacaya, located in Guatemala. Between 2011 and 2013, scientists spotted strange movements in the soil, tiny shifts that suggested something underneath was getting restless. Sure enough, in 2014, Pacaya erupted. Luckily, it didn't collapse, but that risk still looms, especially if magma gets trapped in it like it did with Fogo. The consequences could be explosive, literally. In fact, about a thousand years ago, Pacaya experienced a collapse that sent debris avalanches more than 15 miles away. Since then, it's rebuilt itself like a fiery phoenix, but it could still crumble again. That's why volcanologists obsess over the tiniest wobbles. It's not paranoia if the mountain really might fall. Now you might be thinking here, okay, but that was the past. Surely that kind of ridiculous mega-tsunami collapse can happen again, right? Well, welcome to the 21st century. Islands like Hawaii, La Palma in Spain, and various parts of the Caribbean are sitting on the same kind of geological whoopee cushions. All it takes is the right combo. Loose foundation, steep slopes, maybe some trapped magma, and boom, flank collapse. In fact, it's already happened recently. In 2018, Anak Krakatau, the volcanic baby of the infamous Krakatoa, lost a big chunk of itself during an eruption. It caused a tsunami, but it was more awkward than devastating. Like a volcano losing its pants on stage. Embarrassing, but survivable. But that's just amateur hour compared to history's real showstoppers. Ritter Island's 1888 collapse was so intense that the island literally got shorter. It went from being more than 2,000 feet tall to a mere 460 feet. But the record holder is the legendary Latua Bay mega splash from 1958, where a 7.8 magnitude earthquake triggered a massive landslide that sent a wave taller than the Empire State Building roaring through Alaska at highway speeds. Strangely enough, only five people lost their lives here. But on the other hand, the destruction path it left behind can still be seen today, all the way from space. Melting glaciers and ice caps can make volcanoes collapse too. When they melt, there's a sudden decrease in pressure on Earth's crust that can destabilize entire volcanoes. It's called isostatic rebound. It's like suddenly yanking a chair out from under someone who's been sitting still for centuries. Whoops. Also, here's something you probably never thought you'd worry about on your island getaway. Some volcanic islands grow outward as lava pours into the sea creating unstable platforms known as lava deltas. These deltas can collapse without warning, taking newly formed land, and sometimes tourists too, right back into the ocean. No pressure though, just thought, you know, maybe you want to stay off steaming new land. So yeah, next time you're lounging on a beachy volcanic island thinking, wow, this place is paradise. Just remember, it might also be a ticking geological time bomb with a flair for the dramatic. From ancient mountain-sized cannonballs to surprise lava deltas, volcanoes have a history of keeping things spicy. Not an earthquake, but a mega-earthquake could happen in Japan. It's scarier, bigger, and more destructive than ordinary tremors. However, the problem is that it will occur underwater, which means it will trigger a giant tsunami 100 feet high. A column of water nearly as high as a 10-story building will collapse on coastal cities, wiping out hundreds of houses. The water flow can destroy everything in its path like a bowling ball that knocks down pins. And then another wave may come, 
And another one. Anyone who is at risk should be on their guard. How to survive? You'll find out later in this video. But first, let's find out what a mega earthquake is. This is an earthquake with a magnitude 9 or more. This is a very rare phenomenon, and it depends not on the power of the shock, but on the length of the fault where it occurs. The longer the fault, the stronger the earthquake. But what are these faults? These are cracks in the rocks of the Earth's crust that move relative to each other. Imagine a large puzzle where every detail is a giant tectonic plate. When one part of the puzzle moves away from another or when they collide, that's when earthquakes begin. If the fault between the parts is long, then the magnitude of the earthquake is great. The largest mega earthquake ever recorded occurred on May 22, 1960 in Chile. The fault was almost 1,000 miles long. It's almost half the way between Chicago and Los Angeles. And now a similar mega earthquake can happen underwater. That's how it all started. Last year, on August 8th, at 4.42 p.m., an earthquake with a magnitude of 7.1 occurred in southern Japan. The tremors appeared off the coast of the mainland island of Kyushu. Everyone was terrified as they expected a large tsunami to appear. But fortunately, they faced only a small wave. It collapsed on the shore but didn't destroy buildings. About 15 people got hurt, which is sad, of course, but it could have been worse. It seemed that the disaster had passed. The residents breathed a sigh of relief. However, after that, the Japan Meteorological Agency sent a warning about a possible mega earthquake that could be incredibly devastating. A previous earthquake of 7.1 magnitude could be a harbinger of an impending catastrophe, a disaster that could affect a quarter of a million people. As soon as people heard this, they ran to buy groceries. Increased demand and a slight panic led to shortages of rice and several other basic products. People were stocking up on food and preparing for the worst. But a week later, the Japan Meteorological Agency cancelled the warning. It turned out that the small tsunami on Kyushu Island was not a harbinger. No one knows whether a mega earthquake and tsunami will happen in this region, but the chances are very high. To understand the nature of this danger, we need to dive underwater in a place called the Nankai Trough. It is a 500-mile-long underwater fault that runs almost parallel to the Pacific coast of Japan. This is where the two giant sections of the Earth's crust meet, the Philippine Sea Plate and the Eurasian Plate. And the Philippine Plate is subducting and slowly slipping under the Eurasian Plate, on which Japan is partly located. During this movement, the plates get stuck, accumulating energy. Afterward, when they move and align again, they release a powerful burst of energy. And this energy is capable of causing one of the most powerful earthquakes in the world. Experts report that the probability of a mega earthquake and a tsunami is about 80%. Over the past 1400 years, mega earthquakes have occurred every 100 to 200 years in this region. The last time this happened in Japan was in 1946. The entire country felt a powerful tremor that destroyed 36,000 houses in the southern part of Honshu Island. Every year, the probability of a repeat of this disaster increases by 1%. And do you know how many years have passed? 79. According to experts, a mega earthquake with a magnitude of 8 to 9 can trigger a tsunami that will flood small islands off the coast of Japan and areas with large populations on the islands of Honshu and Shikoshu can be flooded in minutes. Hundreds of thousands of people are at risk. It can be billions and even trillions of dollars worth of damage. According to some reports, about 530,000 people may lose their homes. To save lives, the country needs to carry out a large-scale evacuation. But the problem is that no one knows the exact date. In general, no one in the world can predict in advance when the next big earthquake will occur. In the case of the Nankai Trough, it can happen in a few days, or a few years, or even centuries. So, what should people do? Prepare. Japan has been experiencing earthquakes for a long time, so the country has learned to survive a disaster with minimal losses. Almost every building in Japan is equipped with dampers, 
which are devices that suppress any vibrations and make houses more resistant to shaking. In addition, on the shores of Japan, residents have built long and high shields that don't allow powerful waves to break through to land. Japan also has an advanced earthquake warning system. It's impossible to predict powerful seismic activity in a few days or weeks, but it's possible to detect small tremors that may portend an impending earthquake. Special devices monitor seismic signals and transmit the data to certain programs. Then, they evaluate the magnitude and intensity of the tremors and send warnings to people's phones. This can save seconds and even minutes for locals to reach the nearest shelter in time. These systems are also used to slow down the speed of trains, to stop work at factories, hospitals, and office buildings. It's much safer for a train driver to slow down during an earthquake than to rush forward at full speed. But what if you're on the street and you can't hear your phone messages? How to act in case of disaster? This applies not only to Japan, but also to any place where a tsunami or earthquake may occur. To survive a tsunami, you need to prepare for it long before a big wave hits. It's very important to have good relations with neighbors, be friendly with them, help them, and treat them well. In times of trouble or disaster, it's great to have people with whom you have a good relationship. They can help you get out of a difficult situation, and you can also help them. Be kind and compassionate to people. This way, it's much easier to survive any disaster. Prepare a backpack with necessities in advance. These are a first aid kit, canned food, flashlights, a battery-powered radio, and bottled water. All this will not only save your life, but will also help other people in trouble. So if you feel an earthquake start, immediately run for cover. If you're at home, try to stand against a wall closest to the center of the building, or crawl under heavy furniture that stands firmly on the floor, such as a desk or a regular table. Stay away from windows and front doors and never use an elevator. If you're on the street, don't come close to power lines and any objects that may fall. During a tsunami, you may need to get as high as possible to avoid getting swallowed by water. Stay as far away from the shore as you can and don't go down until you're sure it's safe. But how can you find out about an approaching wave if you haven't received the warning? When a tsunami approaches the shore, you will hear a roar similar to the rumble of a passing train or plane. If there's no elevation nearby, then try to get to the upper floors. It must be at least the third floor, but it has to be a building that can resist a tsunami, such as a massive house made of concrete. If there are no such high buildings nearby, try to climb a massive tree. When the disaster is over, Look around and find those you can help. Listen to messages from rescuers via radio or TV. If all is well, then you can deal with the consequences. Yes, there's a lot of work ahead, but you've survived and helped others survive. And that's the most important thing. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.